All right, everybody, cool. Let me just get some water and then we're gonna do some vibrations demo very quick. Let's set up. Okay, let's focus on, let me see what she did here, here. Okay, cool. I just wanna ex uh, explain the concept, how I think about it and how it, uh, the vibration, everything that's struggle and vibration. I'm gonna show you how I think about it. And it's gonna take us 50% there, right? The biggest mistake you can do is just do this and then just leave it. No, this is only 50%. And this needs a lot of playlisting because it's pixel moves, like small pixel moves. So don't trust Maya, make sure to play blast. So basically the vibrations is usually I pick a spot where uh, I want the vibrations to be. So let's say it's, uh, I pick, to here, for example, and I do a minimum, maximum, maximum, excuse me, <laughs> maximum on the timeline. And then I start working here. I'm like, okay, this is where he's going to struggle the most. And then after that, the mo momentum is going to help him carry the box. Now, this is how I like to think about it. So if this is the, the, spit, the, <laughs> the spot that I pick right here in the middle, I like to think about it, if this is going to be the maximum on this frame, let's say, for example, somewhere here. This is just an example. Let's say this is frame 65. This is the maximum struggle that I want. I like to think of it as this kind of energy, a build-up energy, and then it's going to die down. It doesn't have to be in the middle. It doesn't have to be exact. Nothing has to be exact. Anything could be whatever you want. But that energy is going to build up through time, build up, build up, build up and then it's going to start to dissipate down, right? Does that make sense? So it's gonna be like, a, it's got, because we can't start on a maximum, right? The body is kind of, you want to build into it and then you want to release. You could also, it's not a bad idea sometimes to do something like this, like you build up and then it takes maybe more time, depending on the shot, it takes more time to dissipate. You can also, also do something like this if you need. So you can build up and it can stay at the apex for a while, then it can come back down. There is no rules, but the important thing is that the build up that I want you to pay attention to. You can also start on two frames. You can, frame, you can do two, 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 one, 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 two, 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 and then you relax. No rules, cool? You have two ways to do this. You can either do an animation layer or you can use that control here if you're not using it, the gimbal, the gimbal control. I like to use this one because the animation layer usually slows things down. And it's if I'm not using that control, look, I'm not using it. If I'm not using it, and plus it's a little bit more accurate because if you look at the, at the ROI, and if you look at the ROI here, uh, it's not aligning the same. So I, I kind of like to use the, uh, the gimbal control. Cool. All right, let's start here. So basically, I'm going to add a keyword I want to start. I don't want it to be exact. You know my workflow, messy at first, and then clean up later. So let's say I want to start at 35. I'm not sure yet. But, and then I'm going to relax, let's say, around 81. Do I, how do you know 35 to 81? I don't know. We're just going to play last, and then we're going to figure it out together. And let's say, for example, my apex is going to be when he's lifting the box here Oh, in, his, in, this case, in this case, the tire. Let's zoom in. I don't know why I'm doing this. Here we go. Let's zoom in on the head, actually. So let's say, for now, I'm going to have my apex, my maximum vibrations around frame 59. Open the graph editor. I have my gimbal control. Here we go. If you want to be extra clean, you can only add keys to the ROI if you want like this, I only have this. So I start here and I end here. So it's very important for you to end and start on frame zero. Otherwise it's going to affect your future and past poses. Let me explain. Let's say here, for example, you end up somewhere like this, right? Everything after your animation is going to have this value. It's going to have a value of eight. We don't want that. We want it to start at zero and end at zero, right? Like this, cool. So. What I like to do, I like to come in. I'm gonna add one key. 
on each. So I apologize about the, the noise. My mechanical keyboard was a very bad idea, but it looks nice. It has some cool lights. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Boom, boom, almost done. I have a tool, by the way, at work to do this. I think Animbot has a tool that does this for you. Like it adds a key on every frame. Okay, let me re-delete those and re-delete everything else. So I can only deal with the ROI. Cool. Okay, in theory, this is what we said, and we wanted the maximum to be somewhere around, I think it was 65, uh, sorry, 59. So this is going to be my curve. I'm going to mock in that energy I was telling you about without even paying attention to, to kind of my, uh, my, my animation. Like I, I'm, this is one of the few times I don't look at my camera. I just want to get that curve in, and then that curve is going to tell me, it's going to give me information. Yeah. There we go. I might need two here later. I might do this later. If I think it's too fast, if it's starting too fast, I am open to everything at this point. But let me just manually put this, this kind of energy in. And it will be very easy to scale in and out and shift around if we need to. Uh, let me cheat a little bit. No, it's going to take longer. There we go. Cool. Yeah, it doesn't have to be super exact, but it's fun just to add like a cool shape. So almost done. And I have no idea if I might, this might be too much. So be open to changes. Here we go. Do something like this for now. Let's play and start feeling it out. First thing I can see is that it's too much. Like this is something we should feel, not see. Yeah, it's a little bit too much. So look how easy it is. You can just take it, select all the curve and scale it from zero here. When you scale it, still make sure this is still zero and this is still zero, very important. Here we go. Let's play again. Uh, I think it's starting. Yeah, I think it's fine. Let me just do this so it can dissipate a little bit sooner. Just on twos maybe in the beginning. Yeah, I, mean, I like it. <laughs> cool. At this point, I will play blast and check the play blast. I don't trust Maya. I only trust the, the quick time. Yeah, I think it can be a little bit more and a little bit longer in the middle. Let's see here. Boom. Let's do it a little bit more. And don't worry, like I know, like I know you're thinking, how will how will I how will I know if it's? I mean, how would you know if it's too much or too little? Um, I'll I'll, I'll let you know. Usually students do too much, so I I'll usually tell students to back off a little bit. It's again, it's something we should feel, not see, which is a very, very delicate, uh, no, it's too much now, but I do like the time. Here we go. Let's kill it. Cool. Best and check. Now this is only for the head and I'll show you how you can add it to the knees and the elbows if you need it. Let me try a little bit more, <laughs> a tiny bit more. And if you want, if you like this, you can ghost. Like I showed you, remember, you can ghost your curves. 
Let me show you guys. See? So if you like what you have, let me undo. You can ghost and then you can scale up. Because if I change my mind, like, oh no, actually I liked what I had before, you can always snap the curve the way it was. Yeah, I think that's good. That's cool. Cool. There we go. And now, now I have that on, on the gimbal control, right? I am going to show you the way of the anim layers. Let me show you how. So same principle. Now I am starting at frame 32 and I'm ending at frame 88, right? What if I want to add something to the knees? For example, for that knee, I'm not going to do the elbows uh, and the other knee, I'm just going to do one knee and it's the same process for everything. Basically here, I think it would be cool if we can add some uh, some vibration here on the pole vector. Cool, and just, uh, it's gonna look pretty nice. Now, this is what I would add it. You can add it here, TX or TZ, it's gonna be the same result. TY, no, either this or this. So the first thing I'll do is I'll try to look for a channel where I can do this. So TX is busy. Uh, I could do it, no. No, because there's some animation here that I don't want to mess up with. This is the animation I did in my spline. I don't want to mess up with it. This is where animation layer comes in. Cool, because animation layer is going to be on top of this animation. So now I can't find a channel where I can just have this curve, nice and clean curve like this, that vibration curve. So I'm going to select the knee. I'm going to go, usually you're here in display where you have your layers. We're going to go to anim, and while you have the control selected, you're going to create a new layer. And I want you to be super well organized. Vibration, knee right. This is what this is going to be like. But check out, I'm going to show you something cool. If I go, I like this energy. I like the timing. I worked hard on it. I spent like five, 10 minutes on it. I'm going to use that same energy to the knee. Cool. So I'm going to copy that curve, copy, go to the knee. Make sure I, this is selected, very important. Open my graph editor, I'm going to add a key, and I'm going to paste it, your choice, TX, TZ, doesn't matter. Let's do TX for now, and you're going to paste it, right? So you pasted that animation in the knee. So technically, we should see the same vibration, same amplitude on the knee, and uh, at the head. But if I play, look what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's too much because it's a rotation versus a translation. So we're gonna need to, to scale that down. Close. Go. Cool, make sure you start at zero and you end at zero and you're free to shift. Like sometimes I like to shift. So maybe I start with the head and then the vibration take it to the knee. So maybe let's try four frames later. Maybe a bit more, eight frames later. Yeah, I like that. Oh, maybe six, here we go, cool. And then you play blast, you check it. Now that you're done, you can Always remember to switch back to the base animation when you're done working with the layer. Now, Maya has a cool thing here. It has a weight value. You don't have to, I would, I honestly don't like playing with the weight. Basically, if I would go 50% here on the weight of the layer, basically it's gonna take this curve and cut it 50% down. But I'd rather do it myself instead of using the slider. You're welcome to do it, but, uh, I like to stay organized like that. And then I'll go, I'll add some vibration on that knee and the other elbow. Cool, 